Good morning, everyone. We're ready a few minutes to get on. <clears throat> Good morning. Recording in progress. Good morning. How's everybody doing today? Great. Excellent. Good, good, good. good to hear. <laughs> Give everybody a few more minutes. Get on. So we'll give everybody a couple more minutes to get on before we get started. For those of you guys, can everybody hear me okay, first of all? Yes. Okay. Good to hear. Good morning, Reggie. Hey, hey. Yeah, your hey. eyes are not deceiving you. Yeah, this is Javier's evil twin, George, running <laughs> the webinar today. So, uh, so we got a few more people coming in. A little bit late. Everybody, a few more minutes. And then we'll go ahead and get started in a couple more minutes. All right, I think everybody we said needs to be on, will be on on there. I'll just keep letting people in as they decide to show up. So good morning, everybody. I hope everybody's having a good Saturday morning, uh, especially after uh, a nice previous long weekend, the weekend before um, on that. Uh, as I said before, your eyes are not deceiving you. Yes, it is me, not Javier. Unfortunately, Javier is not going to be able to do the web today uh, without getting into great detail. Um, he's trying to address what's ultimately most, mo most important is his health right now. So he asked me to go ahead and uh, do his webinar today. So I'll be your guest webinar host uh, for this Saturday. Hopefully everybody's having a good day or will be our house with good plans for this weekend as well. Uh, we're supposed to have a nice day today, even though it's a little gloomy this morning. It's supposed to clear up nicely. So hopefully you guys are all um, got things to do, uh, whether work-wise or well, just for the sheer pleasure of it and grasping in life. As I mentioned before, Javier um, is uh, addressing uh, his health right now and could not be on uh, this morning for this webinar. Um, does that mean you, know, you have to reach out to out them unless you're uh, inclined to do so on there. But uh, all that I ask is uh, keep him in your thoughts um, as he progresses on it. He's made no secret about some of his struggles uh, from um, you know basically long haulers and COVID, some of the things that he's addressing right now, which anything uh, just brings point home um, about continuing to stay safe and continuing to avoid this virus at all costs if you guys can help as well. Um, now, we're going to cover a couple of things. He did ask me to cover a few things regarding um, more proof coming in. Uh, term insurance this morning on there. And, uh, you know, before we get started, I know that we are all, I've all been indoctrinated uh, to Index Universal Life, you know, and being that, and uh, to this day, I still believe it's the best product, the best solution out there overall. But term insurance is uh, not something that should be poo-pooed or or just dis dismissed altogether. As a matter of fact, this year, with all the demands of uh, of uh, insurance people having it high on their mind, you know, top of mind, and term insurance, I I think personally and as a group, we've sold more term insurance this year than in many many years past on there. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that, especially with the type of products that we have to offer regards to term insurance uh, on there. So I'm gonna take you through an education. I promise you that this is not gonna take very long uh, on there. We do have to be off by a certain time uh, before another webinar is gonna get started right after. So if you guys have some questions, uh, by all means, you know, chime in at any time as far as some of the things that we're gonna cover 
Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Let's go ahead and do that. Can everybody see my screen? Yes. Okay, good. Thank you for chiming in. All right. So we're going to be talking about term life versus uh, permanent life uh, on that. And, you know, some of the uses that we do have. And this is a presentation of that you're generated by one of our leaders, Daniela Dubac, um, that uh, put this together for us. So we can thank her, her for that. I'll go ahead and shut off. Javier's text for the webinar reminder is coming a little bit late. I'll have to let that know, let him know that. So what's the difference? What's the difference primarily between term and perm? And I want to get you guys to chime in on this one. Anybody else that can tell me uh, some of the key differences between term insurance and permanent insurance? I'm asked no cash value. I'm sorry, say that again? No cash value for time, time life insurance. Okay. Okay. Uh, what other things? What other differences are you guys aware of in regards to term insurance versus permanent insurance? I'm oh, sorry. What's that? It's a certain period of time. Thank you. Also cheaper. I'm sorry. Say that again. Is is less expensive. Yes, it is. It is less expensive, and we'll we'll cover a little bit about that as far as understanding the difference as far as the expense. Anything else? All right, so let's go ahead and continue. So let's cover some of the differences, at least the documented the most obvious differences between the two. You know, obviously with term, okay, versus permanent, you know, term is low cost, which we already covered on there, and which isn't a bad thing. You know, it's a great thing in most cases. As a matter of fact, that's probably one of the main reasons we've been selling so much term uh, this year for a lot of our clients is because they wanted to get coverage as quickly as possible but at the least expensive uh, cost that they can. Now that doesn't mean that uh, they're not getting the most biggest bang for the buck, which we'll cover a little bit later as well. Uh, eventually, okay, uh, cost will go up. It's, uh, everybody know when that cost will go up for term insurance? Yes. Okay, but when? When when does the cost start to escalate with the term insurance? Toward the end of the period, toward yeah. the end of Perfect. whatever the term is. I remember a long time ago when I ran into a client, a teacher client, um, and when we were talking about the IEO, she says, oh, but I just got a term insurance for my brother-in-law and it's gonna cover me all the way to age 99. And I said, okay. <laughs> Uh, why don't you bring me the illustration, bring me the policy in. And I'll never forget her reaction when I showed her that, yeah, it's going to end at, I think it was 65, 67. Yes, you can keep it until age 99, but look what the premium is going to do. And she just got up from her chair and said that, my brother-in-law, and I'm not going to get into some of the words that she said, let's just leave it to say she was not explained that it's going to eventually going to go up. She was under the impression it's going to stay exactly the same for all, all the way up to age 100 or 99. There's no equity. So as we like to say, it's almost like renting an apartment where eventually a lease is going to end at that time. So that's one of the key things on there. And then of course, coverage will end at that time. Now, these are examples. There's 10, 20, 30 years. Also, there's group term. You know, a lot of people uh, are unaware that their group insurance that they have with their employer is not portable. They have the mis uh, interpretation that the uh, the insurance will go with them. I know that a lot of employers provide even a small policy without uh, making them aware that as soon as they retire or leave, uh, they're not going to be able to take it with, it with them. Perfect example of this is a friend of mine, a uh, very dear friend that actually started maybe a year um, before I did in my uh, electrical engineering career. And for the longest time after I, I changed careers, um, Samples cut off. All right, so we can't see it. Let's see. I wonder how we can. Let's see how we can fix that, guys. 
Can you see it now? Yes. Okay. No, it's a little. It's a little small. Hmm. It's it's kind of cut off at the top and and the bottom. Okay. Zoom out. So maybe you can zoom it down a little bit or something. No, that's that's. Yeah. See, if I do that, it's going to go down to the last little slide. Let's see. All right. I'm not sure. It's probably something I have to do in uh, other settings. Um, but in the interest of time, key, we'll we'll talk about it, guys. You know. We can see um, enough of it. You say, yeah, as long as you guys can see enough. We of can, it. And again, we if can you guys see are cutting off or it's or something that you don't understand, just please chime in as well. Again, back to what I was saying about a, a personal friend of mine, he had term insurance through our old company on there. And every time I tried to approach him about doing an IUL, he said, hey, I got plenty of coverage. I got uh, well over half a million dollars to cover my entire family. Well, he got sick. He got sick with uh, cancer and uh, had to go on disability. So guess what happened when he went to uh, disability? He kept his term insurance, but unfortunately, all that extra insurance he bought got reduced down to the bare minimum was about $50,000. And eventually, unfortunately, he passed away shortly thereafter. So ha he went from his family went from having a half million dollar payout to essentially a $50,000 payout upon his death. So it's very important that people understand the difference between group and, and group term versus regular term insurance as well. Now, permanent, higher costs initially, okay? but the costs stay level throughout the life of the policy as well. But you build equity. It's just like building equity in a home um, on there. And of course, the coverage never ends. Well, you should say, you should say never, because if somebody yeah. does make it to 120 yeah. years old, <laughs> then the coverage will end. I always like to joke with my clients to let them know that um, you know, the, uh, if they make it to age 120, they're looking at a nice big fat check that they're gonna, re they're gonna receive, but uh, good luck in spending it if you're gonna be able to at age 120. So example of this, of course, is the index universal life, universal life, variable life, and whole life as well. Huh? All right, so let's look at the three parts that we're looking at. And this primarily focus on our products. In this case, national life, you guys should recognize the puzzle piece. So we got death benefit protection. That's applicable to both term and permanent insurance. Living benefits, our term also has the same living benefits as our IUL. But the cash value accumulation is strictly for permanent insurance types only on there. That's the only place where you can actually build up cash value that you can use later on in life as well. And this is one solution for multiple risks, as we like to say. Everybody should be familiar with this on there. You guys should have this just pouring out of your pores anytime you guys talk to anybody at all uh, in regards to what you do as well. So let's talk about living benefits here in California. And I'm gonna ask a quick question. Uh, for our particular parts, and we'll focus on national life for now, for terminal illness, how long how long does the doctor have to give an individual uh, to qualify for terminal illness? How, how much longer do they, can they live? Two years. Two or less years. Two or Two less or years, less. perfect on there, okay? So who gets the cookie? The bio, you get that, I'm speaking back <laughs> of that, let Javier know, okay? How about for chronic, okay? What's uh what is the qualification for chronic insurance? Don't everybody answer at once. Okay. Anybody at all? Well, you can't you can't do two of the of the six um, uh, daily activities. Okay. Okay. Anybody uh, know what those are? Can you recite the six daily activities? Yeah, Reggie knows. Go ahead, Reggie. You're on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> what? Feeding, <laughs> feeding yourself, bathing, clothing, uh, and then a couple and three other ones. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had a buzzer. <laughs> Everybody says. That's why you have uh, a reference guy, reference book. That's a, that's that's very true. Transfer, ambling or transferring. Transferring, ambling. yeah. Okay. There you go. There you go. All right, guys. You guys should know this, okay? Verbatim on that. Yes, we do have books to show the, what these triggers are, but you guys should know these on there. What about See, when, I, when I'm talking to people, George? I just I I, I named the three, and this, and I'll say there's three other ones. <laughs> and I keep and I keep it pushing. All right, all right. Well, hey, all the works, man. Laws, laws works. All right. How about for critical? 
What are some of the trigger uh, the triggers okay. for critical? Go ahead, Gary. Uh, yeah, your doctor has to to um, to diagnose that you have a um, um, you know a, 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 you had a heart attack and or you know it has sure. to be a uh, it has to be uh, diagnosed by the doctor that you have a um, um, a, uh, a a critical uh, either injury or um, you know um, a disease a disease a disease. <laughs> <laughs> Go no, no, Gary, don't don't, know. Gary, I'm going to let you off the hook. I don't want you to hurt yourself. Anybody at all. Uh, what <laughs> you know what just, just, just give, us, give us a couple of triggers for, that qualify under critical. What are some of the things that are covered on the critical? It's not Trans, transplant, heart attack, yeah, heart stroke. attack, stroke, cancer. Stroke. Okay, I heard a couple more. Any, any other ones? Emphysema. I said, we, were, we got, really got to turn this into a game show. This will be entertaining. All right, let me give it to you guys. I'll, I'll let you guys off the hook. All right, so here they are. All right, so for terminal illness, yeah, death within 24 months. You guys got that. Chronic illness, uh, Reggie. <laughs> we got bathing, uh, continence, dressing, eating, toileting, transferring. And uh, technically, you know, it's not uh really listed alzheimer's and dementia over there which will trigger essentially any of these conditions as well for the critical we got cancer stroke heart attack blindness major organ transplant okay end-stage renal failure anybody know what end-stage renal failure anybody not know what end-stage renal failure is kidneys kidney disease thank you kidneys and of course uh als which is uh being Brought to attention, and uh, for those of you that follow baseball right now with Lou Gehrig's day. And of course, on the critical injury, which has only been around for a few years, um, we've got coma, paralysis, severe burns, and traumatic brain injury. So, matter of fact, for those of you that have been in the business, this is probably the one of the bigger benefits um, outside of the new allocations for cash value that we've been selling to a lot of our existing clients as a way to upgrade their policy. Well, we could we could um, build some questions regarding that as far as what you should be doing, especially those clients that are still on the old provider plans, uh, may be interested to upgrading to just to get that additional ABR. So examples of us now, this is unrestricted use. OK, so if you get money for any of these conditions, whether it's terminal, critical or chronic on there, you can use it. So we got some people talking. Uh, all right, like here's some background noise. Um, you can use it to pay your mortgage or rent. It could be income replacement. Just that. Uh, experimental treatments. I think, uh, I don't know if it was you, Bob, or something, or somebody in Florida talked about a teacher uh, or a client that used it to pay for cancer treatment in another country that wasn't being covered by her HMO. So you can, you can use that money for that. And um, that's a, that's a huge benefit. If you guys don't know that story, you guys should uh, tell that story. So the way, uh, and again, I took a little bit of liberties, but client got a an IUL uh, probably in her mid thirties. Shortly after she got the IUL, she got diagnosed with a rare form of cancer, and the only available treatment was in another country on um, there, which her HMO was not going to cover. So her doctor declared her terminal <coughs> without that treatment. Um, which certified her to get a nice big check out of her IUL, which she then used to pay for that experimental treatment and eventually ended up saving her life as well. You guys should be telling this story left and right as far as the importance of it. A lot of noise, guys. Oh, critical injury. Oh, okay, that's good to know, Danielle. I'll, I'll share that. Danielle just chimed in in the chat box that uh, uh, critical injury is, is can be added to the policies now. <clears throat> so um, if you guys have existing clients that want that benefit, you can add it on there. But reality, uh, you know, if it's in their benefit to just go ahead um, and just upgrade their policy, especially if they have an old provider plan, um, I would definitely encourage you to they're just going to get more bang for your buck by, by doing that as well. Uh, yeah, I actually added, added a few of them last year. It's, it's a few forms, but 
I definitely had it for me. Okay, perfect. Perfect. All right, let's keep going. And of course, we got hotels, flights, meals, nursing home, household expenses, pretty much anything, you know, uh, and they don't have to pay it back. And then the, what's the other big benefit about it, of course, is it's tax free. So anybody that comes out, any money that comes out of any one of these living benefits, they do not have to pay taxes on it. And it's primarily because it's tied to the, uh, uh, to the life insurance. All right, guys, this is somebody, I'm gonna have to mute everybody. Sorry, get a lot of background noise. And I'll just um, let you guys unmute yourself as we go along. All right, let's keep going. So this is just a, cu a couple examples as far as the rates that you would see with uh, Terrell's. And again, this is still National Life Group that we're talking about. <clears throat> Here is a 20 year term that were for $250,000, which seems to be uh, the usual request that we get. As you can see, that's, that's gonna be a $65 a month premium um, in this example. What if they actually do get a preferred rating? Well, then, then their <clears throat> excuse me, this one. Then their their rate really goes down. Uh, you know, almost by thirty dollars a month, which could make a big difference on there. And well, we can't see that bottom half, George. Preferred rating. Let's see. I'm I see what I can do in that in this case, guys. Oh, it's not gonna let me. Uh, well, yeah, it goes down from $65 from a standard rating to a best preferred rating of $37 um, a month to do that. Now, uh, I know we talked about term in the past. <clears throat> What's usually a cutoff that, uh, uh, and I think, Bob, you're the one that uh, mentioned this, in order to get the least expensive term <clears throat> or at least drive the term um, premium down uh, besides actual ratings. Anybody know? Okay. Well, if you guys go over 250000 so if you just add $1 to this, regardless of whether it's standard or preferred, of course, there's my dog right now. Somebody's at the door. But we'll keep getting I'll try to see if I can get my son to actually get it right now. All right. So we're looking at um, this coming down just by adding a simple dollar. Hold on. Let me close the door. That's good when it's protecting the house, but not in the middle of a webinar. You guys can add this on if you want to post it on YouTube or anything. Anyways, getting back to this, uh, just simply by adding another dollar to this, we'll actually put it into another rating class, which will actually save the clients money as well. So you just got to be aware of that trick. <clears throat> Here's the summary of coverage by you going up by $1 as far as uh, that. There's a terminal illness chronic illness and of course the critical illness on there and again you guys just got to make sure that you uh you share that with the client that uh this is going to be up to the doctor as far as the severity of their condition anywhere from minor to life-threatening uh that they receive on that all right here's an example of a term going up to five hundred thousand. as you can see you know just the cost of this alone this doesn't go up by you know it goes up incrementally between the two and simply by just getting a better rating, you're saying that that cost will nearly uh, be cut in half, like in your best preferred rating on um, these particular individuals as well. And here are the benefits of having a $500,000 policy. So again, as you can see, <clears throat> the living benefits right now, which is top of mind to so many people, is so important, you know. And again, uh, I actually had a couple of clients that did have uh, COVID this year and got some long haulers um, conditions, uh, just like our esteemed leader. And uh, one of them actually did qualify for, I believe it was a category two moderate uh, benefit uh, on theirs, simply because they had a partial paralysis that they got from, uh, from uh, COVID or some of the long haulers effects of COVID as well. So any questions on this at all? You guys can go ahead and unmute yourself. Let's 
No? Or is everybody muted? Everybody's unmuted. All right, let's keep going. All right, so let's talk a little bit about permanent insurance and one of the key differences. So when <clears throat> we're looking at a the same type of premium outlay for everybody, okay? Uh, so they're doing $200 a month in this particular case, which gets them a policy of 121,000 and change. This is called $122,000. And they just pay it as usual all the way into their 60s. Um, and one of the key benefits, of course, is they get that death benefit. But more importantly, they start building up cash on there. Now, uh, these are for the clients that are looking to actually do, <clears throat> um, you know, build up some cash that they can use for retirement. Uh, while still getting coverage as well, and getting that life insurance. Uh, now, the nice thing about it is by a certain age, um, they'll be done uh, paying for this. The only difference is, is that the coverage will continue. You know, they're not putting a, another dime <coughs> into this particular plan um, at that time, which you cannot get in term. Once you start stop paying at the term, uh, the policy will essentially lapse and go away. Uh, same thing with whole life. Whole life does not function this way as well. Uh, whole life is designed for the individual to keep paying that premium, uh, in most cases, all the way up to the end of the policy as well. Uh, and the key differences you need to understand between a universal life plan and a whole life plan is that whole life, the cash value is primarily there to cover the cost of insurance as it continues to escalate with the age of the client versus universal life that allows you to go ahead and overfund it uh, and build up more cash. Yeah, you guys can't see much. Hmm. Uh, let's see. I'll pause this for just a second, guys. Okay. I wish yeah, I had it's, just, it's just like you zoomed out real big or something, that's all. And every time I try to try to zoom it back in, let's try this. Hold on a second. I'm gonna escape out of this and I'm just gonna go through the slides. Hold on a second. Without it being a a, a PowerPoint, a without out of presentation mode. Hold on okay. one second. Can you stop the share or pause the share? Let's see that. Okay. I'm going to try to reshare the screen, see if this works better. <coughs> it will be smaller, but at least I can zoom it out a little bit more. Okay. Can everybody see it now? Yes. Okay. Yes. Go, Go back. Much better. Good. Back a little bit. <laughs> Come on, Reggie. We're not taking the picture. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Is that good? There you Pretty go. Good? All right. Let's just, let's just keep going, guys. So, again, <clears throat> The pre, you know, they're paying the premium up to a certain point, which in the, in turn they build up cash value. And then the nice feature of this is to have the four thousand one hundred fifteen dollars of income uh, coming in, uh, uh, you know, for the individual if they choose to at retirement as well. That uh, doesn't look like a lot of money, but if you look at it from a perspective of how much money they put in, they essentially are putting two hundred dollars a month to almost get double the money back. In retirement and one of course the biggest benefit of all is that it's all tax-free now this does have a minimum in this particular example of 106 dollars a month but as we um, all know if you do that for an extended period of time the cash value will not be there i've had several clients that have done that and maybe did it a little bit too long so they had to uh, super fund it all over again they had to go back to the maximum and uh, then some. If, they, if you guys ever do run into that situation where a client has been paying the minimum for an extended period of time, they can catch up just by putting a little bit extra in there to try to build up the cash. But of course, you know, it'll be help build up the cash, but they'll never get that time back to do that. So let's keep going. All right, so here's <clears throat> the living benefits on the permanent plan. And again, as uh, we emphasized before, uh, this is going to continue this coverage even well into their golden years, even into retirement. So as you can see right here, just on the chronic illness alone, uh, if you see the difference between 65 and 70, their 
chronic illness benefit goes down. And that's primarily because they're, uh, it's taken into account that they're drawing income. <clears throat> so as anything else, if, if you are talking to a client and chronic is something that's very important to them, uh, on the, you may want to emphasize that if you start taking income out of it, that benefit's going to go down uh, as time goes on, especially during their retirement as well. All right, any questions on this slide? All right, let's keep moving on. Okay, so now we're doing $500 a month in their permanent plan. Okay. Now that client has gone up to $314,000 of debt benefit. <clears throat> and of course, built up the cash value. Uh, they're putting they're putting in the, the uh, $6,000 a year all the way up to age 67. And then at age 68, they can start drawing out essentially what amounts to about $12,000 a year. So in this particular example, they're basically getting double their money back from what they normally put on on a yearly basis. And of course, had the cash value on there. And understand that uh, you know a lot of clients will ask you this question: you know, Is this something I'm going to be stuck with? <clears throat> Not necessarily. You know, they can always go down to the minimum, which in this case would be $237 a month. Um, they can uh, try to pay it off sooner, which I have, I have a couple of clients that are here to try to do the seven pay option on this. And, but more, most importantly, the income. You know, I've had this question, what if I don't need the income? Do I have to take it that 10? You have to emphasize that <clears throat> one of the uh, great benefits of this particular uh, plan is that they have ultimate control and flexibility. They can actually decide when to take the income. They could take the income one year and not take it the following year. Um, you need to educate your clients that you know once they get to this point, uh, you may not be around. Uh, you may be retired, hopefully not the worst on there. So you need to make sure that you educate your clients as much as possible as far as how much control they actually have on this. You know, I've had people ask me, what if I want all the money or a bigger chunk? They're always going to be within their rights to uh, take out as much money as they desire. <clears throat> but if they want to keep the benefits and the policy in force, uh, there's only a certain amount that they can take out. Now, typically on policy loans, what's how much is the percentage? What's the maximum percentage that they can borrow against their policy? I'm looking for a percentage here. Anybody? Who knows? Let me put you on the spot again, Reggie. Ninety percent. Ninety percent. Thank you, sir. So ninety percent at any given time they can take up to 90% of the cash value in the form of a loan and still keep that policy in force. But you, again, you have to make sure you educate your clients that anytime they take out a loan, uh, any type of loan, it could affect future income or future cash value down the line. Uh, just did um, a loan or helped a, a client process a loan where they're taking out $50,000 uh, and for good reason, they're doing it to uh, make some modifications to the house, uh, do some upgrades. Uh, essentially, they're using it to basically invest into the house itself because they're getting ready to put it on the market. And they found that this is the best way to do it. And their plan is exactly what they should do. They're gonna take out a, a, a you know a maximum loan, do the repairs, sell the house. And from the proceeds of their sale, they're gonna turn around and pay the loan right back. Again. Okay. Um, but, Again, you also have the clients that uh, do the opposite. I've had clients call me up and you know with an emergency and say, "Hey, I need to get this loan as soon as possible." And you know, I do help them out as much as I can, putting in the paperwork so they can get the loan. And I'll never forget when I asked the client, I go, "So what's the emergency? If you don't mind me asking, I hope everything's all right." He says, "Oh no, everything's fine. I just had my eyes on a Harley Davidson that I wanted, and I only had a short short window to get it," which not what I would recommend people do with this policy, but they are within their rights to do that if they so choose. Okay. Right, let's go to the next slide. <clears throat> so again, the benefits, the living benefits on the uh, this particular policy, you know, they get 271,000 at age 65. And remember, this is always, always an example. Um, I always educate my clients that, hey, if you take this benefit or qualify for this benefit at an earlier age, it's gonna be a little bit less. If it's, uh, oh, if you're older and haven't taken any income out, then obviously the benefit's going to be a little bit more. So this is just simply an example. 
Now, uh, how soon does terminal, I'll ask you guys another question, just keep you guys involved. How soon does terminal illness, does the uh, benefit take effect once the policy is issued? Immediately. Want anybody? How about you, Andrew, should I pick on you? Reggie? Come on, guys, you guys should know this. Immediately. What's the question? How soon will the terminal and illness benefit be in effect once the policy is issued? One year. Anybody else? Two weeks. Two. Okay, two weeks. As soon as, the, as soon as the premium is paid. Yes, that's the answer I'm looking for. This is the only benefit that is uh, available essentially from day one once the policy is enforced and the premium has been received and paid for on this one. Uh, the other benefits have a waiting period on this. Who could tell me what the waiting period is on the chronic illness? 30 days. Okay. Any other guesses out there? Two weeks. Two weeks. <laughs> <Did I guess? laughs> no, Reg is correct. I just to, I'm testing everybody else to see what the other benefits are going to take effect. So, you know, the living benefits are great, but terminal illness is the only one that's, that would be in effect from day one. So if if uh, something, God forbid, you know, the day after, I mean, it's an extreme example, but if the day after somebody gets diagnosed with terminal illness, <clears throat> then, uh, you know, that coverage is there. However, you know, if the insurance company may contest it or may just go back and look at the process to make sure they didn't miss anything, if somebody does get a diagnosis like that. In there. So again, the chronic illness, uh, the benefits that are, are there. And for me right now, I think chronic illness is probably one of the biggest benefits on there. Now, it's not perfect. You can't call it long-term care. But if you look at the flexibility of the chronic illness uh, that this person can receive, um, yeah, I, I personally think that uh, it, it, goes, um, it is much better than what long-term care could ever offer an individual as well. Um, anybody understand how long-term care works before their benefits kick in? Just so you understand the difference? Don't everybody speak at once. All right. Yeah, long-term care, which a lot of companies have gotten out of, especially here in the state of California, will only take effect if an individual ends up being in a skilled nursing facility. That's a long-term care, or at least they're designated that they need skilled nursing at that point. Okay. Chronic illness doesn't have any of those uh, restrictions. I mean, if the doctor says you can't do two of your daily living functions, it'll start paying out. So there's a little bit more flexibility. The downturn, of course, of chronic illness is that there's an endpoint on there. It's only going to cover them for 50 months, as opposed to long-term care that could potentially, once an individual qualifies, cover them in, indefinitely. We had a chat. Why is the chat box opening up? All right, guys, let's keep going. I know somebody had something in the chat box, but for some reason, it's not coming up now. All right, let's just keep going. Okay, so let's go ahead and just unmute yourself. Whoever put that in the chat box for somebody that I can't open it up, or at least it's not letting me. But um, any questions at all, I'm going to go ahead and stop the share right now because we got to wrap it up in a couple of minutes. Any questions at all of what we covered today or anything that you guys want to share? Oh, I see. Michael, did you have a question, Adder, Mr. Adder? I guess not. Huh? All right, guys. Well, look. Can you hear me? Yeah, Michael, I can hear you. Did you have a oh, question? No, I didn't have a question. I'm sorry. I, I think I said something on accident. Okay. All right. No worries. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay. Daniela, can you elaborate on your, now that I can, now I'm finally seeing the chat box. Can you elaborate a little bit more on the chronic illness for home care? Oh, so, yeah, you mentioned uh, long-term care. So yeah. to a added point to that. So long-term care, you can actually stay at home, but in a, long, a traditional long-term care policy will pay as long as it's like a certified caretaker that takes care of the person. Yeah. And it would pay out like 30% of the benefits if just like anybody. Yeah. Um, and like with actually, with um, FFS Omaha, Mutual of Omaha, 
there that's the company who offers um long-term care and yeah. uh, they're actually the best company in California that's still available that offers long-term care that has those policies. Because sometimes, depending on the age um, of a client, an IUL just doesn't pay out much for long-term care because you might have to run it in option B and so on. So obviously the ABRs are gonna be limited. So then a traditional long-term care policy might still something be something to consider. Yeah, so that, you know, long term, I'm not going to poo poo what long term care does, but yes, it does have those restrictions on there. Um, have you guys ever talked to uh, either companies or people that provide um, care for the elderly? Um, you know, in many cases, they, they, they consider long term care as a broken system right now, uh, simply because of the restrictions. And especially with everything that happened with this pandemic, who wants to be in a skilled nurse? Everybody wants to be home. They can help. They don't want to have their relatives or uh, their individual stuck in a skilled nursing facility. And you guys should be thinking about uh, using that as one of the primary reasons uh, people should be getting uh, either a term policy or an IUL with us in that regard, because they've seen it. They've seen the extreme what the potentially happened to their loved ones, whether they're stuck in a, in a skilled nursing facility and they couldn't take visitors, couldn't see them, and God forbid that they passed away during that time as well. That should resonate with a lot of younger people, the importance of actually getting a plan like this uh, for their own protection. On there. Uh, Michael, did you have a question? We just got to wrap it up. No? All right. Well, listen, everybody. Um, I'm sure Javier will probably keep everybody posted on this. Um, don't know. I believe he's pretty confident that he'll be back doing the webinar next uh, Saturday for you guys as well. Um, but if not, you know, one of us will pick up the ball and keep running with it. You know, myself included, try to help him out. And again, I can't emphasize enough about keeping Javier and your thoughts and prayers uh, with everything that's going on um, uh, with him. But uh, I'm pretty confident that he's going to be fine. You know, he will battle through this and he's doing everything that he has to to make sure that uh, uh, he overcomes uh, the conditions uh, from his previous disease. That being said, I want to wish you guys a great rest of your weekend on there. For those of you that are on this call, I'll be seeing you guys on Monday. And for the rest of you, I'll probably see you guys Saturday morning with Javier Du conducting the webinar at this time. Um, so you guys enjoy the rest of your weekend. And I look forward to talking to you guys again soon. Bye-bye, everybody. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. See you, Julie.